Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the week ahead. All right, no major news over the weekend. So most of the currencies are where they are. Now, a bit of focus here on the FOMC minutes this week, but there's a few other things I'd like to highlight that, that are going to come up. Now, just on a daily perspective, let's just have a quick look where everything's uh, finished last week. Euro a little bit higher. We've seen a nice retracement back here in, um, in dollar Swiss and also dollar yen. In actual fact, I really like the uh, the pullback here. It does recharge everything for a nice move to the downside. And you can see here that dollar Swiss has come back, as has dollar yen, to really key levels. Now, the dollar index, it's just a, basically giving us a mirror image of what's actually happening in the uh, euro, pretty much. Uh, dollar, well, actually, sterling, as I say, dollar cad in the range, Aussie and Kiwi, still within recent ranges. But you know what? I think the weaker dollar is starting to, to, to show signs that it's about to stick its head up again. Because if I come back to the hourly charts, you can see it a bit clearer, right? Euro heading higher, uh, sterling, Aussie banging away there as well. And if I just adjust uh, that trend line there on Kiwi, even after the Kiwis cut rates last week, it doesn't take long for that to be factored in and for the Kiwi to be jamming topside like it's, uh, correlating brothers there, right? You got dollar CAD moving to the downside. That's a little bit of a tricky one, right? Because it's massively oversold and oil is falling again, which probably more than likely takes dollar CAD higher. Now, here's the uh, last week was the surprise cut from the, I'm um, oh, not surprise cut, lost my train of thought. US CPI numbers, weaker US CPI numbers. Now, we saw on the interest rate probability side of things, you know, cuts factored in across the board. Weaker numbers were 100% factored in. Now, this is going to be a lesson for us. And I just probably wasn't paying attention. If weaker numbers are 100% factored in, if we get weaker numbers, there's only way one way things can go. If the whole market's short, it goes up. And that's what we saw uh, on the dollar, right? We saw dollar Swiss scream to the top side as dollar yen as well. Market's short both of those instruments. It has come back, hit some good levels. And you've seen some discombobulation here. And let me just show you, if you think you're missing out, this sort of price action here shows me that there's carnage, right? And I like it when I miss it because it means I haven't lost money. Lots of uh, big short squeeze of the dollar, huge to and fro there on the resistance line, same on the support trend line. And you know what? Hasn't really gone anywhere after all that. Okay, so that's something you should be happy about if you missed that uh, that situation. Now, let's just have a look where the major opportunities are this week. And I've just got trading economics here. If I just go to the top tier numbers, right, having a look at uh, the key aspects here, RBA minutes on Tuesday, uh, Canadian inflation numbers, definitely uh, a bit of a worth a look. Although, you know what? The market is factored in like 97% or 98% chance of a uh, Bank of Canada cut. Weaker numbers here don't do anything for us, right? That's something to be aware of. Balance of trade figures there in Japan. I wouldn't be worrying about that. FOMC minutes. We want to hear from the Fed, from Jerome Powell, see if there's anything sort of significant we need to know about what they're doing. The market has factored in interest rate cuts. So that's, we want to make sure they're actually talking about that. If they're not, well, you might see the dollar rally a bit, but I, I can't see them doing that at this stage. Um Thursday, manufacturing PMI numbers in uh, Germany. Yeah, maybe. But inflation numbers out of Japan, forget about that. Fed Chairman Powell speaking uh, on Friday. That is something to uh, pay attention to as well. Right? So that's they're the sort of head kicker numbers, right? Top tier numbers. Really, the Canadian inflation numbers, the key aspect. Now, if I wind this out to include the second tier numbers, there's a bit more detail. Right? We want to keep an eye on the Chinese, right? They cut rates last month, surprise cut in the one year. If if they cut rates again, it's going to impact Aussie and Kiwi to the downside very quickly. At the same time, we have the RBA minutes. The market, there's 90% chance of no change of rates from the RBA. So if they start talking about potentially changing rates here in this in these minutes, you might see the Aussie drift to the downside, or if they stay uh, strong with that tone, it just means that Aussie's going to keep sort of slowly going up. Uh, Tuesday, the Canadian inflation numbers, as I said, I'll be covering a live session on this, but
But with the numbers already factored in for a cut, weaker numbers, no good. Well, it's not no good. It just confirms the cut. But I wouldn't, I can't imagine too much of a movement on the CAD because it's factored in, right? We'll be looking at the CAD crosses very closely around that uh, release. You come into Wednesday and obviously the FOMC minutes is the key to it. Um, that is going to be, you know what, the determining factor. And it, at this stage, right, the Fed has waited so long to get it right that I can't see them changing the plan. It's more like the market will have a look and just confirm that that is the plan, right? And that should just keep markets steady after that. There's always the chance of a knee-jerk, weird reaction to some sort of crazy news, but the Fed aren't in the mood, in the mood, I should say, to rock the boat. Now, Thursday, <clears throat> in Europe, we've got a whole bunch of PMI numbers, uh, Germany, the Eurozone, and the UK. And then you come into the US session, we've got the initial jobless claims, right? This is a third tier number traditionally. It does sort of whip around what's going on. Uh, we've got the S&P uh, PMI numbers in the US as well. You know what? These are all connecting numbers. They're not like going to rock the boat by themselves. But if they sort of join up with all the other data coming out, then we might see some uh, action. This Jackson Hole Symposium, another junket for... Um, the central bankers, right? They love free dinner, nice wine. Who doesn't? But that's uh, something just to keep an eye on. You're going to have uh, probably some news coming out late Friday, maybe over the weekend around what they're doing. But in actual fact, they're probably getting together and saying, hey, we're all cutting rates. Let's get a move on, right? There could be some sort of joint announcement there from the central banks as we go through Thursday afternoon into Friday, Canadian Retail Sales Friday, probably worth a look. Once again, weaker numbers. Yep, we're already cutting rates, so it doesn't do, do much, right? But we can look for uh, potential opportunities around the, where the technicals are lining up with the fundamentals, new home sales, and the Fed Chairman Powell speaking Friday, worth a look. When you get into the third week of the month like we are, you're starting to look for technical trades, Right? We don't need always need high-impacting macro fundamentals to give us direction. As you can see here on the hourlies, as I was saying, we're starting to see clear direction here on a lot of the pairs. Kiwi ready to go as well. Uh, that should be dollar lower, right? So to me, this week, I think we could have some technical trades in play. We're just going to get past the Fed, make sure they don't do anything silly, and then we're on for young and old, right? That's the sort of key to it. Just on the interest rate probabilities, just to give you a quick look at that. The Fed, okay, we've got the minutes. They 73.5% chance of 0.25. In actual fact, 26% chance of a 50 basis point cut. So the Fed are cutting. You come down to the RBA because we've got their minutes coming out. No change, 90%. So if there was something in there that suggested they were leaning towards a cut, that's where we would get the move, right? And... Uh, just on that, with the Bank of Canada, because we've got a number, couple of numbers coming out, the cut, 98.6% factored in. So weaker numbers, right? It's not going to move the market because that's already factored in. In fact, stronger numbers uh, probably give us something to sort of think about. Now, as you come into the start of the week, okay, US uh, interest rates pretty steady. We are seeing a risk-on profile there on the US equity futures and a bit of a risk-on profile in the currencies, with the Swissy being the odd one out. Uh, generally, the dollar's falling against most things. Euro, sterling, Aussie, Kiwi, moving topside. As I said, the third week of the month, we don't have massive top-tier numbers coming out. We have these central bank minutes. I'm thinking we could see some nice trending uh, markets this week, with the trend being a weaker US dollar, especially after the clean-out um, following last week's US CPI numbers. Right, we had the US CPI numbers. Everything sort of the dollar uh, sort of rallied, even on the weaker numbers, because the whole market was short, and that's when you get that sort of move. And what that does is it flushes out all the stale positions. You can see it here in sterling on the Aussie, uh, Kiwi, and now it's like a like a forest that's sort of burnt to the ground, ready for fresh growth. And that's what I'm thinking we're going to get across the board, uh, weaker dollars. And we should start to see the trend trade, which is a weaker dollar 
pop its head up this week. It'd be great to see. All you need to do is get into the trade and manage it as we go along. All right, that's it for me, guys. Have a good week. All the best. Cheerio.